Hello, this is Flipped Harbor for Algebra 2, and in this video we'll cover Section 3.4, Linear Programming. Our objectives for this lesson is to just to solve linear programming problems. Our topics are much bigger though. We've got linear inequalities, systems of linear inequalities, graphing systems of linear inequalities. These were all the previous section of the book. Then we'll get into linear programming, the vertex principle of linear programming. We'll talk about a constraint, a feasible region, and an objective function. So let's take a look at how all of these problems are going to start out. A lot of your work will look like the last section. You're going to be coming up with inequality, linear inequalities and you're going to be graphing them. A lot of times you'll have to come up with these equations. Now obviously it doesn't stop here because if all they wanted us to do was graph these they would have just thrown them in with the previous section. What we're going to be doing is actually looking at a lot of story problems sometimes. And we're going to be trying to find out how to maximize or minimize something. Now let's take a look at the story problem where these uh, constraint equations came from. These are what's called the constraints because these set up the situation. Now it says Jillian is planning a green roof that will cover up to 600 square feet. She will use two types of plants blue lagoon sedum and raspberry red, red sedum. Each blue lagoon sedum will cover 1.2 square feet and each raspberry red sedum will cover 2 square feet. Each plant costs $2.50 and Jillian must spend less than $1,000. It asks us to write the constraints and graph the feasible region. They tell us to let B equal the number of blue lagoon sedums and R the number of raspberry red sedums. Now, a lot of times people forget the two most basic constraint equations. We can't have negative numbers of plants. So B is greater than or equal to zero, R is greater than or equal to zero are two very obvious and very often overlooked constraint equations. Now, the rest of the constraint comes from either how much area the plant covers or how much the plant costs. So we know that each blue lagoon covers 1.2 square feet. Each red sedum covers 2 square feet. So when we add it all up, it has to be less than or equal to 600 because she will cover up to 600 square feet. The cost is also a constraint because she can't spend more than $1,000. $2.50 times B plus two dollars and fifty cents times R has to be less than or equal to one thousand. So again, these four inequalities are what we refer to as the constraints. It's basically going to be the beginning of our problem, is figuring out what these equations are and then graphing them. When we graph them, that's what we refer to as the feasible region. In this case, this almost a triangular region is what's referred to as our feasible region. It's all the possible combinations of B and R that still fit within our square footage and our cost constraints. Now, linear programming is the idea of from these constraint equations either maximizing or minimizing values. So the way that we approach this is with the vertex principle of linear programming. It says if an objective function has a maximum or minimum value it must occur at one or more of the vertices of the feasible region. So if the problem is asking you to, max, to find the maximum or minimum, it's going to occur at one of these vertices. It's just a fancy word for a corner. You might need to plug in all the corners to see which one is the maximum or minimum. Honestly, that's going to be the smallest part of your problem. The biggest part of these story problems is going to be coming up with these constraint equations. So your homework is going to break down into three major steps graphing the feasible region, finding the corners, and then plugging those corner values in. That first one's going to be the hardest one for you. I'm just going to be totally honest. In the story problems, the hardest part is that first one, finding the feasible region. So let's take a look at some examples. 
In this example, they want us to maximize p equals 5x plus 2y. Now, when it, whatever we're trying to maximize or minimize, that is our objective function. Our objective is to maximize this. They're giving us our constraints, so this really shouldn't be that difficult of a problem. We just went over how to graph these inequalities together. So this is what this region, this feasible region, looks like. Y is greater than zero. That means that we're staying to the right of, excuse me, above the x-axis. X is greater than zero means that we're staying to the right of the y-axis. Y is less than or equal to negative x plus 10. Well, plot the y-intercept 10. Use a slope of negative 1 to draw the line. Y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. Mark the y-intercept 1. Draw a slope of 2. Identify your four corners. Now, it's not always going to be four corners, but in this one it obviously is. So these corners, or vertices, as the fancy name is, are 0, 0, 0, 1, 3, 7, and 10, 0. Now what I'm trying to do is maximize the objective function. So I need to plug these x and y values into the objective function and see which one maximizes it. Now it's not always just going to be the one with the, ten, the biggest number. It's going to depend on what that objective function is. So we have to plug in to ev plug every single point into that equation. So we find out that p equals 0, well that's probably going to be our smallest one, p equals 2, p equals 29, or p equals 50. Well, if we're trying to maximize it, that's our biggest one right there. So the answer to the problem, it kind of depends on what they ask. In this one, they say maximize this equation. So our answer is the 50 itself. If they ask where is it maximized, then we have to answer with the point 10 comma 0. So pay attention to what they ask. Are they asking what is the maximum value or are they asking where is it? Okay, let's take a look at another one. Now we want to minimize. We're looking for the smallest number. Now our constraints look a little bit different. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they look just like the first one. Sometimes they look just like this. Sometimes they look totally different. Our first one is really two equations in one. Zero is less than x is less than four. Means that our x values have to be between zero and four. So that's two vertical lines, one at zero, one at four. Y has to be greater than or equal to one. That's a horizontal line and we have to be above it. Y is greater than negative x plus four. Well, we find that y-intercept of four. We use our slope of negative 1 and this is our region. Now this region is what we refer to as unbounded. It only has three corners. There's no corners at the top. Those arrows keep on going up forever and ever and ever. So it's probably a good thing that they asked me to minimize P because if they wanted me to maximize it there's probably no maximum. So I plug in my three points 0, 4, 3, 1, and 4, 1 and notice that my minimum value is there at 3, 1. So again, looking at the question, they want me to minimize P. So my answer would be the 18. If they asked where is it minimized, my answer would be the point 3, 1. Okay, so let's do one that's more of a story problem. These are going to be more difficult. These are going to be more time consuming. It says a grocer buys cases of almonds and walnuts. Almonds are packaged 20 bags per case. The grocer pays $30 per case of almonds and makes a profit of $17 per case. So we know that I'm, we're going to be writing equations that involve the number of bags in a case and how much they cost and how much they make. Walnuts are packaged 24 bags per case. The grocer pays $26 per case of walnuts and a profit of $15 per case. He orders no more. Okay, so here right away when you see things like no more than, you know we're going to be setting up some inequalities. These are going to be some of our constraints. He orders no more than 300 bags of almonds and walnuts together. Okay, so there's a limitation on how many bags we can have at a maximum cost of $400. So there's a limitation on how much the grocer is willing to spend. 
So first step, they want us to write the constraints. They want us to write these inequalities. Use x for the number of cases of almonds ordered, and y for the number of cases of, al of walnuts ordered. All right, so let's start with the obvious ones. These are the ones that everybody overlooks. x, the number of cases of almonds, and y have to be greater than 0. We're not going to order negative cases of almonds, so x and y have to be greater than or equal to 0. Don't forget about those. Now let's write a constraint based on the 300 bags. We know that there's 20 bags per case for almonds, there's 24 bags per case for walnuts. So 20x plus 24y has to be less than or equal to 300. Now our cost is the other constraint. Almonds cost $30 per case, so 30x plus $26 per case for walnuts, so 26y has to be less than or equal to 400. So here we have our four constraint equations. Now we want to graph these constraints. We want to find our feasible region. Let's find x and y intercepts to graph the bottom two inequalities. The top two, though, should not be difficult. Stay to the left of the y-axis, stay above the x-axis. The first two are covered. So if I find my x and y intercepts for the first one, I find out that x has to be less than or equal to 15. y has to be less than or equal to 12.5. x has to be less than or equal to 13.3. And y has to be less than or equal to 15.38. So these are points to mark on the x and y axis. Now, x has to be less than or equal to 15. The other one says x has to be less than or equal to 13.3. So let's just stick with the 13.3 is the lower one, and the uh, lower one in the y tells us where to shade. So here's our feasible region, and we've got this weird corner that might be kind of a pain in the butt to find, right where those two lines cross. The best way to deal with that or maybe I should say the easiest way to deal with that, make a good graph. Now, we've got our feasible region. We've graphed our constraints. Now, part C says write the objective function for profit. So any businessman's objective is to maximize his profit. So if we write the profit equation, he makes $17 per case of almonds and $15 per case of walnuts. So he wants to maximize that. So how many cases of almonds and walnuts maximize the grocer's profit? Well, our vertices are the corner 0, 0. It's probably not going to maximize profit by ordering and selling nothing. The corner that's kind of out there in the middle of nowhere is actually the corner 9, 5. We have a vertex at 0, 13.33 and 12.5, 0. Now I want to make a substitution here. I want to replace that 0, 13.33. We can't order fractions of cases. So I'm just going to use 0, 13. And the same thing with 12.5, 0. We can't order 12 and a half cases, but we can order 12 cases. So basically I just dropped the decimals. I didn't worry about rounding. I just dropped it. So our profit, when we plug in 0, well, no surprise, 0. Our profit at 0, 13 is $195. Our profit at 9, 5 is $228. And our profit with 12 cases of almonds, 0 cases of walnuts, is $204. So obviously, we're going to order 9 cases of almonds and 5 cases of walnuts in order to maximize the grocer's profit. OK. So really, that's it. You're going to have some problems where they lay it out for you. Here's your constraints. Here's your objective function. And then you're going to have some story problems. The story problems are obviously going to be more difficult. They always are. But it's time to get to work. I'll see you in class, and I'll see you online.